The Baldwin Locomotive Works was one of the biggest manufacturers of steam engines in the US, building everything from shunters to streetcars. Naturally, with such a great reputation and so many years' experience building and designing engines, you'd think that when they produced their magnum opus, railroads from all over the country would be flocking to get their hands on it. Baldwin seemed to think so. However, this wasn't quite the case. Around the beginning of the 1920s, Baldwin was starting to face some serious competition from the Lima Locomotive Works of Ohio. Their chief engineer, William E. Woodard, had started to develop what was known as superpower, essentially making several significant changes to the designs of his locomotives to better utilize steam. This resulted in engines that were overall faster and more powerful. Baldwin needed to show they were capable of producing engines capable of matching Lima's new designs, and so in 1926, they answered back with this. Number 60,000 was officially the 60,000th steam locomotive produced by Baldwin, and to mark the occasion, Baldwin built the engine with multiple experimental and innovative features. It used a 4102 wheel arrangement, was fitted with a water tube firebox, boasted a high tractive effort, a top speed of 70 miles an hour, and rather unusually for an American engine, used a three cylinder compound design similar to many European locomotives. It was intended to be the best locomotive Baldwin had ever made. It was first trialed on the Pennsylvania Railroad at the Altoona Test Plant, and by pulling freight between Enola and Morrisville. It was then sent to the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad for further testing before moving to the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad at the start of 1927. While there, it ran alongside an M21 class to compare coal and water consumption, with 60,000 proving to be more efficient. Afterwards, it was trialed on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. Again, having its fuel efficiency compared to the other locomotives the railroad was currently using, and again, proving to have a superior fuel consumption. Southern Pacific was next to trial the engine, having it converted to burn oil. While the engine did still work as intended, it was found to perform worse burning oil than it did while burning coal. Southern Pacific wasn't interested, and so the engine was moved to the Great Northern Railway, where it was once more trialed and once more unwanted. Now, you might be thinking, if it was an excellent design, why didn't anyone want it? Well, there's a multitude of different reasons. Firstly was its wheel arrangement, which many railroads saw as outdated. Mallet-type engines had been used in the States for almost 20 years at this point, and as such, the simpler 4102 design was viewed as obsolete. Next was its firebox. The water tubes around it were prone to bursting, and while this could have simply been marked up as prototype teething issues, it wasn't something many railroads were willing to risk putting up with. Its weight was another issue, as most railroads that would have wanted a 4102 at the time had a limited loading gauge. A loading gauge 60,000 was too heavy for. And finally was its compound design. To simplify, a compound engine is a locomotive that uses both high and low pressure steam to power its cylinders. Usually, with one to two cylinders using high pressure steam and the remaining cylinders using the exhausted, lower pressure steam. While this system did help significantly improve an engine's performance, it came at the cost of being more difficult to maintain. Most US railroads had rejected the use of compound designs at this point, which meant there was very little interest in Baldwin's compound engine, regardless of its performance. With nobody wanting Baldwin's best engine, they ended up converting it back to burning coal and using it as a static boiler. The story of Baldwin and the 60,000, though, does have a happy ending. The engine did at least demonstrate to many railroads that Baldwin was still capable of delivering powerful and efficient machines. With Baldwin later going on to build the Chesapeake and Ohio's 2662s, many of the Southern Pacific's cab forward designs, and countless engines that were shipped abroad both before, during, and and after the Second World War. 60,000 was donated to the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia in 1933, where it has since stood on display. In the end, 60,000 is a rather unique and unfortunate story of something being exceptional in the wrong place at the wrong time. Perhaps if most companies didn't look down on compound designs or gave the water tube firebox a chance, 60,000 could have revolutionized railroads all over the US. All the same, while both Baldwin and 60,000 came out all right in the end, let this be a reminder that when you put your best foot forwards, make sure it's in the right direction. Subscribe for more.